Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. Well, that was Maggie Wilkins' last word spoken directly to her former teacher, Erin Canodal, at the West Fargo School Board meeting tonight. A man who she said she allegedly had a sexual relationship with when she was in high school. Thanks for joining us tonight. The West Fargo teacher was accused by a far, or acquitted rather by a Fargo jury in June of having a sexual relationship with Wilkin in 2009. Tonight, he was reinstated by the school district and will receive his pay from being suspended the past year. Valley News Team's Krista Baim explains why the board voted to bring Knoodle back. Maggie Wilkin and her family looked on as the board unanimously voted to allow Aaron Knoodle to be a part of their school district again. Anyone who knew me before Aaron Knoodle decided to quote, help his at-risk student, would say I was a much happier person and would have been better off without his quote, help. Her first time speaking publicly outside the courtroom, this time not proving their relationship, but asking the board not to allow Knoodle to change the life of other students in the way hers has. I have nightmares almost every night have flashbacks on a regular basis. And because of society's unsupport, unsupportive point of view, I am often victim blaming myself. An argument against a teacher, her family spoke up for as well, adding that social media has played a hand in making them victims too. My family has been dishonored by witnesses for Aaron Canodal, the media and social media, and indeed, indeed KBLY, whose Facebook link was in the forefront leading the way to post victim blaming, shaming, and naming. Despite their words, the board looked at the teacher-student relationships as well intended, fulfilling a challenge by the school to reach out to a struggling student, acknowledging his lack of limits. Even though he expressed to us that he had been somewhat frustrated with the amount of time and energy he was devoting to his mentee, he had failed to set limits on when and for how long phone contacts would be acceptable. A problem the school board says needs to change as society changes with it. With today's social media, the way things can get around, it, it's, it's difficult both for staff and for students. I, I think we are behind the curve um, as a state and as a district on how we handle these situations, and I think something has to change. An adjustment that will continue to be discussed after a decision that has changed to parties lives. Krista Bame, Valley News Live. Canodal's reinstatement does have one more step. The state licensing board plans to meet next week to consider his employment status. Well, accusations of being given the wrong medication, not being brought food, and just a general lack of care at a local nursing home. The situation at the Golden Living Center in Moorhead was brought to our attention last week via our whistleblower hotline. Now, we pulled the most recent survey of the facility by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services from last October. In it, there are 19 deficiencies at the facility, ranging from failing to provide adequate supervision for residents deemed at risk of leaving to giving residents the wrong medication, even sending one person to the hospital for a drug overdose. We went to the facility trying to talk with one of the residents, Terry Steen. Her family told us about a situation they say occurred about two weeks ago where Terry began falling, pulled the emergency nurse cord, knocked herself out, and laid on the ground for an hour and a half before someone came to help. I feel like my bill of rights have been violated, my amendments, the freedom of speech, and I feel like I'm being kidnapped and so did the other residents because we can't go out of our room. We have to be sure of room trade because of the influenza breakout. Now, our cameras were not allowed inside to see Terry, and our reporter was told, get off the property. The facility is on lockdown, according to the executive director, Melissa Chisholm, due to a pres presumed infection, and no visitors are allowed in. According to U.S. News & World Report, the average number of deficiencies for nursing homes in the state of Minnesota are about seven. Golding Living Center had 19. Now, if you need help uncovering fraud and corruption in your community, call our whistleblower hotline at 701-237-6576. Leave your tip and a member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. 
A group of taxpayers are suing North Dakota over an educational issue that concerns the Smarter Balance Consortium, which administers the controversial Common Core tests in schools and wants an injunction to stop it. While the judge considers the question, it's important to understand how this case could affect North Dakota students. If the plaintiffs were granted their injunction, the defendants warned that there's a high risk of not getting a new testing system in place on time. According to the state's lawyers, the state will not stop testing to Common Core even if it loses the case. All this case would do is remove the state from another group of states that use the same test. The state also says there's a high risk of scheduling failure, which would create the risk of losing federal funds. Opponents argue, however, that the students lose out when the state does not fully control the curriculum. The state's already looking into other testing options, regardless of the outcome of the lawsuit. Boy Scouts of America's National Executive Board has overturned a decades-long ban on gay scout leaders. Amid rapid social changes in the country, the board concluded the policy of excluding gay adults is no longer legally defensible. Even though the national ban is gone, local scouting units still have the ability to reject gay applicants for leadership positions. The board doesn't want to interfere with a unit's religious beliefs. The new Boy Scouts vote represents a fast turnaround for the organization. It was only two years ago that the board voted to admit gay young people as scouts. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office has released surveillance video from an armed robbery that happened last Friday night. Take a look at this. Officers say this man walked into the Cruz Inconvenience Store in St. Hilaire. And as you can see, the man was carrying a rifle and demanded the clerk get on the floor. He then took money from the safe. The suspect then left the store in a van, which was later found burned southwest of St. Hilaire. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office is asking anyone to report if they saw anything suspicious or have any information on this case. Starting tomorrow, there are some roads in Moorhead you might want to avoid when you're out there driving. Congestion is expected along 20th Street South in Moorhead. All turning lanes are going to be closed between 28th and 30th Avenues South. It's all part of an ongoing construction project there. After a crane hit the bridge earlier this summer, the main traffic will remain open, but with the turning lanes closures, delays are going to be expected. Construction should last until the first week of September. Today, our team was able to enjoy and get to know the town of many areas, including Lisbon, North Dakota, and its wonderful people, as we were riding the rails through the valley. Take a look at these smiling faces. We got the chance to talk to some locals as well as the mayor and other town leaders to see how Lisbon is doing as a community. If you missed us today, you can still see us tomorrow. We'll be live from the towns of Lemoor, Verona, Oaks, and Gwinner. And although that we have been asked, no rides are going to be available to the public, but come out and meet our team. I'll be out there. Watch for Valley News Live riding the rails tomorrow. Valley